Hey everybody, welcome to the second episode of EDP with ap 99 In this video, we're going to be talking about our newest design of a robot that we use for the Halloween claw bottom. today's video. You're probably wondering why Harvey's not here today. He had a mild concussion by, while playing baseball, but don't worry, he's recovering very well. Show him some love in the comments, and he will be back with us soon. Whoa, your catapult looks really cool. How does it work? Um, so basically, um, uh, the main part of the catapult um, is um, our snail gear. Um, basically, um, it will pull the catapult down, and when you twist it, um, and once it gets past a certain point in the snail gear, um, it will shoot the catapult. Um, something um, also unique about our catapult um, is that it can also a score logo too. Um, because when you bring the catapult down um, and then spin a, a the snail gear in reverse, um, um, it can also bring the ball up into the logo. Um, the last main part of the catapult um, um, uh, that makes it work is that we also have um, a PTO system here, um, which basically um, shares the motor power from our intake um, to our catapult, um, which allows us to have a two motor catapult and a two motor intake. Okay, cool. What are your next steps in your robot design? So one of the main issues that we had at our competition was scoring two balls rapidly. Well, one of the main problems was that we would score our first ball, um, and then bringing the catapult down and scoring the other ball uh, was rather slow. Another one of our issues uh, was passing two balls at the same time. A lot of times our passer would get stuck um, and the balls uh, won't travel out that far to our teammate. So basically how we want uh, to try uh, to solve um, uh, this passing problem is that we're hopefully going uh, to uh, rebuild this um, passing mechanism a uh, ground up and make sure that um, that it won't get jammed as much. Um, uh, for our catapult, uh, we also um, want to make it a bit more um, efficient and also uh, rebuild the catapult in many parts. Um, lastly, uh, we're also um, making a another robot um, on the side and we hope that we can also show that a robot as well, a team guys. Okay, so now we have Kyle here. He's gonna talk about his coding from the last competition. So Kyle, can you explain your coding to us? Sure. My goals were to score eight, eight balls into the goals while clearing four switches. So my strategies for the competition was to start off here with a string touching the wall. I would keep one ball here and with a preload in the robot, and then I will drive back, score some low goal, and then the high goal. And then I will drive here with, with two balls already waiting here for me. And then I will score here, one low goal, one high goal. And then I would continue cycling until the time of the game was up. Okay, cool. What was the outcome of the tournament? So, the strategy went off. So, for my first autonomous, the string mechanism got jammed and therefore the intake was stuck the whole match. Even when I reset, the, the whole mechanism was j still jammed and would take a lot of time to, re to restring. So therefore, that match was a very low score. And for my second match, it's a ball got jammed here, and when we shot it, two we couldn't clear two of the switches, but we did get a, 30, some, some, 30, a 34. So for my third autonomous, the, the catapult actually shot in the three switches and four goals. So 
for my starting part, where I shot the first two goals, one of the goals missed, and we could not rerun it in time. So therefore, we could clear three three switch switches and four goals. So what's the next step to the code? So since you know and Dan are building their new robots, I'll be helping them develop new strategies and new codes. And now we have Zeno, and he's explained new concepts for the team. So what's the main idea for this robot? The main thing on this robot is that we're focusing more on scoring the ball. The last robot was pretty inefficient at doing that. So to be more efficient at scoring balls, we have to have multiple scoring mechanisms for multiple things. So this roller here is to roll the ball into the logo like this. And the catapult here is supposed to catapult the, the ball into the high goal up there. What's a unique mechanism you have in your robot? One really unique thing that only a couple people have is this fishing line back here. I call it a fishing line because it reels out and comes back in, right? Like that. So uh, the concept for this is that it you can roll this out and then it will stick on the wall of the field. So technically, uh, because you need, because in the game manual it states that one part of your robot must be touching the wall. The, if we put, if we attach this to one part of the wall like that, it could technically start in the middle of the field, which will help greatly for collection and just being efficient in general. Because you don't have to be at the wall and then drive there, drive there. You can just be in the middle. So the team robot has a PTO. Do you have anything similar to it? Yes, I do. Uh, I have something I personally call the brick. And the brick has three main motor groups, one of which being dedicated to the intake, the catapult, and the logo roller. And the back motor group uh, for the drivetrain, but can be switched to the intake in emergencies or if we're the ones scoring. Because if we're scoring, then we don't need to drive around. So technically, we can switch switch these motors to the intake, so we have a quicker collection. And the middle motor group can be changed from drivetrain to intake. And usually, it's on the drivetrain because we want to drive around with four motor drivetrain. But sometimes, if we if if there's not enough power on the intake, then this will automatically be switched to the intake motor group. Which will give it, which will give the intake four motors, like all, this motor group four motors to. It, yeah. So the concept is that the middle motor group will assist the, the front motor group automatically if it needs more power. What are the next steps to improve your robot? Currently, uh, we are in the testing phase of the engineering design, pro design process. So when we get those results, at, after testing, then we can go on from that and, uh, and fine tune this robot. All right, thank you for watching another video of EDP with 8398. We really hope you enjoyed this video. And remember to show some love to Harvey in the comments below. Remember to like and subscribe.